to commemorate the yacht site, we traveled to Ukraine for a virtual tour and talk from Rabbi Yossi Glick, live from Rabbi Schneerson Shul. Rabbi Yossi Glick is originally from Melbourne and does amazing work for his community. Not only does he take care of his community's spiritual needs, he does something so incredible for the vulnerable children who would otherwise have no hope in the world. He runs two orphanages in Ukraine. After witnessing young children begging on the street corners, he hired specially trained teams of social workers to take food packages to so many starving children living on those streets through the amazing Wheels for Life bus operation. He also gives those children an open invitation to live in a safe and caring environment where their medical, physical, emotional and educational needs are looked after. Rabbi Glick, welcome and thank you for joining us. Please tonight, can you tell us about Jewish life in Ukraine? Standing in front of Reblevik's shul, I'd like to tell you a bit about the history of Jewish life in the city under Reblevik and how it is now. As you can see, the city now has, thank God, not a terrible lockdown like many people have around the world. We're now down to the stage where people are just wearing masks in stores, but besides that, people are basically living their lives. It's uh, very special to mark the yard side of Bavlevik in this city, a city where the people here feel a very strong connection to. He was sent here in 1907 by the Rebbe Rashad, the fifth Lubavitcher Rebbe, to, be, to help Yidden in the city. After a few years, he became the rabbi of the Tiferes Yisrael Shul. And uh, after a few years after that, he became the official chief rabbi of the city, which is an official government recognized position, which means he recognized, he represented all the Jews on a government level. After many years of various fights with the Soviet government over various issues, he actually quit his job. He, the official give, uh, reason given was that he no longer needed the government salary as he had a son who could support him. But everyone knew the real reason was he felt that his fight for Jewish life in Ukraine would be much better served without the government position and all the uh, extra scrutiny that that uh, brings. A few years later, he was arrested. Officially, the official reason why he was arrested was for religious anti-Soviet activity, but everyone knew the real reason was he was just another victim of the purges of Stalin in 38 and 39, where hundreds, thousands, no one even really knows the real number of people were arrested, murdered, sent away to Siberia for no other crime than someone had decided that they weren't lo loyal enough to Stalin. Their families were really left behind, the families that could not find jobs, no one would hire them, the children couldn't go to school in many cases, and they would usually just starve. Everyone was too scared to help, everyone except for Ablevik, he fought a battle to collect funds to help these families. And these families were not, these people were not arrested for religious activities. These were doctors, lawyers, just pro plain people who were just arrested on trumped up charges for not uh, perceived as not being loyal enough to Stalin. The government decided to be much uh, better if Reblevik was sent to a place where there were no Jews. They sent him to Chile, a small town where there was no Jews, but there was a lot of malaria and uh, mosquitoes. His health really deteriorated over there. So after a few years, the government decided he's no longer a threat and let him move to Almata, where his health just deteriorated further. And on this day, Khafov in 1944, he returned his soul to his creator. When Reblevik was in this city as the chief rabbi during his tenure, there were 80 registered Hadarim, the biggest of which had 200 students. Zavid Amelov tells us that Hazarim, Bedim, Amberini, Iktsayro, people who plant with tears or reap with joy, for us in Nyepro, it's not a matter, matter of belief, of Amuna. This is something we openly see. Every place in the city where Reblevik was oppressed, has turned into an epicenter of Jewish activ activity. The KGB building, not far from here, where he was held and interrogated, is now next door to a Jewish school, which is named after him, the Rebbe Yitzhak School, which is situated on the Rabbi Schneerson Street, a street named by the government after his son. Uh, the house where Rebbe Levy lived on Barry Kadnay Street, where he was arrested, is now next door to the Menorah Center, where the Chief Rabbi, Rabbi Kamenetsky, has built the largest JCC, Jewish Community Center in the world, 55,000 square meters, 
1,400 mezuzahs. And my fa personal favorite, this building right here where we are, which is Reblevik Shul, which is now the orphanage. You can see over here where this store is, used to be the house where Reblevik lived across the street. I remember when I first came, it was still standing. I'd like to just show you a bit inside the building. Over the last 20 years, we've managed to save hundreds of children, orphans, some of them orphans, some of them just families, children living in distress, parents who are abusive or in prison for various reasons, not usually associated with the Jewish community. And thank God we have helped, helped uh, save them. Now, on Chofov, there's no more special way to connect with Reblevik than to say a Vart. The Rebbe teaches us to connect to someone you really need to learn his the Torah. So I'd like to repeat a Vart of Reblevik in his shul. Reblevik explained that in the Haggadah it says, we say to the son who's the Rosh of Ata Hake Shinov. It's usually translated as smite or hit his teeth which is just the wrong translation. That's not what it means at all. It means answer him sharply, set his teeth on edge. But even that explanation, Reb Levick says, is a very aggressive approach to take with someone who's rebell rebelling. Reb Levick suggested a more, um, a more deeper approach, a more loving approach, which was his derech through Kabbalah to find something which most people took as a negative thing and find the positive in it. And he said, the hak is shinov, the word shinov can be translated as his two shins, shinov in plural, which are referring to the shins on the tefillin. We have on the tefillin the classic shin on one side, shin with three arms, and on the other side we have a shin a bit unusual with four arms. Rebledik says that Alpi Kabbalah, this is the three of Avram Yaakov, and the shin with the four arms is Sarif Garach of Rebledik teaches us that if you have a son who's rebelling and you'd like to know what's the best approach to bring him back, the best approach is hake from the Lushan to uh, highlight, write something bold, highlight to him that he is uh, his lineage, that he comes from Avram and Yaakov and Sarif Garach of and there's no better way to bring him back. We've tried in our orphanage to use Reblevik's approach and always try and find a loving approach to help these children. Baruch Hashem, with his derech, we have succeeded in helping hundreds of children over the years. Uh, I'd like to thank you for listening. And Hatzlach HaRambe. Thank you so much, Rabbi Glick. Thank you for the tour, seeing we can't travel. It's amazing to actually be there and be with you. And it's also wonderful to see that places that were once so oppressive for Judaism are actually now places that are thriving for your community. Thank you again for everything you do for the children. Can you just tell us really, really briefly before I let you go, how did a boy from Melbourne end up in Ukraine? Well, I was sent here on Shlichus from Yeshiva in America for one year. And at the end of that year, Rabbi Kamenetsky, the Shliach here, asked me to stay for one more year, which turned into another year. And then I went back to America after I got married came back here. And that was just, uh, it's just one of those things in life that happen. You start something temporary, you start something small, start working something at a very unprofessional level and it just snowballs into a, a big project, something like the orphanages, which just started as really just uh, some bachrim, some unprofessional people just seeing a problem and starting on a very small level helping and it just grows. It started off actually as on a level of trying to teach children and we realized that in order to help feed their souls we first had to feed their bodies so and after that it just when we grew a bit we realized that we're not only helping jewish children because we want to help their souls we're helping jewish children because we need to help jewish children and uh it's just somewhere where we see ashkocha pratis that this was not i didn't come here as a permanent thing this was just a one year and I'm still here, Baruch Hashem, with my family. Well, you're doing an amazing, amazing job. And it's just incredible. It's heartbreaking to have learned just how many poverty-stricken children there are. But thank you once again. And congratulations on all the amazing work. And thank you for being with us.